As in, like, we've done eight seasons for us coming back to work. Yeah, it's yeah. like, we know this, you know. We know what we're doing. I mean, at least we know these characters very well. Um, and obviously they've changed and they're in new situations. But it is like putting on an old outfit that you know and is worn and fits your body very nicely. Um, so that's good. But it's uh, it's definitely a hard time for Booth and Brennan when we open this, this season. I don't think it's easy. <laughs> I'm not saying it's easy, but it's, it's different. Very like, difficult. It's very That's different for me. I'm not saying for you. It's very different than starting like a whole new character or something like that. Like that's right. if you did a whole new project, that's a much different thing than coming in and doing the same thing you've done for eight seasons. No, I guess it's true. But I mean, I think you kind of uh, try to develop a sense of, I mean, trying to stretch and become like because the writing is so unique with itself with the relationship that you just so try to they put us in this situation where you have to kind of see this character in a different light because of the environment you know and it's like what's so interesting about shows is they say to you well how can you be in a show for eight seasons how can you have be a show for six seasons and not get bored of it I think that for us it's always been about our relationship and the character's relationship and being able to be thrusted into situations that and are changing, different and changing and evolving. yeah and evolving different and that's what makes it exciting it's not like hey we're showing up to work and being like oh well we got this we'll take it for granted i don't think that we we do that I we're not that we're on autopilot no we're not we're, we're very <laughs> we're we're always interested in the next scene and the next moment that we're going to have and how we can kind of evolve that around to what's going on between the two characters and obviously like Emily said it's going to be an interesting tough start to the season because of how the uh, season 8 ended you said that Booth wakes up in pain every morning mm -hmm. is that physical or psychological and are we going to see any I of that would, I always wanted to show that I, we haven't really seen that yet I think that it would be fun to show that um, maybe one maybe an episode we will examine that because of his what he went through in the past with his uh, being a sniper and being captured and, um, tortured. and tortured. So I think that there's an opportunity for that, and that's one that I've always kind of, I kind of put that into hearts of Ben of, he's got ideas of Ben that he keeps from us, and so I would love to show that. So maybe one day we can see that. How, how does the broken engagement affect Brennan? And does she, like, what is it called? My brain is not working. Like, does she go back into like her shell and put walls up again, or is that going to? She be... regress. Basically. That's the word. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> I'm amazed. I thought of it. <laughs> um, uh, you know, there will be. I, I, she can't help but try to protect herself in some way, a little bit. And she's incredibly sad, but she's not going to regress to her old self. Okay. I think she's evolved enough that she's not going to completely regress back to her old self. Um, uh, she will have, she'll try to protect herself, but not to the degree that she used to. And does she find, do we eventually find out or does she find out why it had to happen? Eventually. Eventually. Yeah. Um, and she's a logical person, so I, I believe it's a logical enough decision that he made that she would hopefully forgive him. Okay. How do you analyze the changes that Bones and Booth have been through all these seasons? How do you analyze them? How do you analyze the changes? Analyze changes? They have been through a lot of changes, their relationship so hard. Right, I'm trying to figure out the, how do you analyze that. How do you analyze that? <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm not, I don't analyze it usually, but yeah. I'm trying to figure um, that one out. I'm using my brain or something. Um, I don't know. I mean, to me, I, I, the way I see Brennan's changes is she kind of built a wall, like you said. She built a wall to protect herself, and slowly each brick is coming down. Mm -hmm. And the last season, she's been the most vulnerable. The last season, the last ep episode of that season, she was the most vulnerable she's ever been, that we've seen her. And she really opens up, and, and as a result, is hurt more than she's ever been hurt. And so... You know, that's incredibly hard, but at the same time, from knowing him, from loving him, that is what, that's what has changed to her. And I think that's a wonderful uh, thing, that, to see a character change because of love and because of another person that they love. So um, that's how I look at the changes my character has been through. Okay, thank you. Guys, you have time for just one more question. Okay. David, were you uh, at Comic-Con during Angel? Yes. I was here. What with, has changed? Oh, man, a lot. I mean, we came here in 97, so that was with Buffy, and 
we were all just excited to be working on a show that was on the verge of a cult success, and it was the making of Joss Whedon and uh, you know Dave Greenwald and Gal Berman and things. Fox were extremely interesting at that time and we just walked into a uh, I would I almost kind of looked at it more or less like Grateful Dead show in the parking lot um, not so glamorized and not a lot of publications here and people holding signs yeah that was definitely not part of None the, of the swag yeah there was there was swag but I think it was like three tacos for <laughs> you know down the street here's there's a coupon or right. You know, I think there was not, it was just a really strong sense of a community that was so diehard um, comic book fans. I think that, a, a, and, and it's interesting to see how it's grown. Obviously, it's become huge, and like the Lorax, you just keep, uh, <laughs> everyone wants a piece of this and that, and before you know it, then it's all going to be gone, and it has to rebuild in a different way. But, um, you know, it's uh, to see the studios come in and pump their films, and their new shows and they really have no connection to the comic book character. It's interesting and kind of funny to me. <laughs> I know, I know. It really is. We originally isn't. went there, went here, came here, because we came here before our show had even aired. Yeah. We came here because of you and yeah. because of being on Angel and Buffy. Yeah, to try to g- gain some support of those fans and bring them over to the ball yeah. sector. and. Uh, but they've come out in masses, and I think it's interesting. If you, I mean, one thing I do find great about our show is if you just listen to the show like on an old-time radio show, like the way they do the world radio classics, you can get that sense of a Dick Tracy kind of a feel. That that's I keep saying Dick Tracy, but that would be my comic book metaphor for Bones. That they is, should bring the fans. Yeah, next time. You know, I should have dusted them off. I could have put them on and done a whole interview with you guys. Sure. Always Halloween. You know, right? Yeah, it's true. Who says I need Halloween to put on? <laughs>